You think this is ordinary tap water? In his mind is the key to breaking out of jail. He drank 10 liters of tap water in half a minute. Then, he went on an exercise bench to boil it. He waited for the warden to make his rounds. He found the right moment to spray vomit on his shoes. The guards felt disgusted, so they dragged him and threw him into the infirmary. He lies down and flirts with the nurse, in order to pee in the bathroom. The nurse brings him a bedpad. Van says, that's not big enough for me to pee. I drank more than 10 liters of water. At this point, Clyde, who had been waiting for him, offered to go to the bathroom with him. The two of them had died, V, to in a mop bucket. Then they stepped on the stainless steel toilet, to pull out a tool hidden in the ceiling. Clyde blocked the door. Bang cries opened the sealed door of the trash can. Once they were inside, they made sure to put it back the way it was. Then they follow the pipes to the prison's utility room. The two of them lifted the coffin board that they had already prepared. They loaded it under the grocery cart. This was the hiding place for the two men when they escaped. When the grocery cart arrived at the prison gate, the guards looked under the car through the reflector, but they found nothing. While the car was being refueled, they quietly climbed out of the coffin and got into the luxury sports car that came to meet them. As the gas was pressed on the car, they took off. In order to buy time for Bang, one of his companions in the prison deliberately asked his henchman to run in front of Jack to provoke him. Who can't stand that? During the battle, they took advantage of the chaos and beat the guards on the ground. When the captain saw the situation, he pressed the emergency button. When he hears the alarm, the warden declares the prison to be in a state of emergency. Then he closed all the access doors. He started negotiating with the inmates. Approve buying a copy of Dance with Dragons for the prison library and go for the Game of Thrones show. The Winds of Winter and The Dream of Spring have yet to be published, so those aren't available. This pissed off the inmates. They took out their poop and smeared it on all the cameras in the room. They brought in serving trays and tons of tinfoil. Then they blocked all the windows. The warden was flummoxed by this maneuver, but he decided to keep it quiet to save his job. You think they're writing over a few books? You'd be wrong. They're covering for Bang to pull off the greatest heist of all time. Have you ever seen a cockroach robbing a vault? He grabbed 500 cockroaches and painted them in different colors. Then he goes to the supermarket and buys two shovels. He gets to blowers. Once he had all the equipment, all he had to do was assemble his robbery team. Jimmy first came to find his brother Clyde. Although Clyde was missing a hand, he was definitely smart enough to pull off a heist. Jimmy was working on a project when he accidentally dug up the transmission pipes from the racetrack's cash registers. These pipes are in the ground of one of the most popular stadiums in the country. Every day there are races of all kinds organized here. And when the races are held, a lot of people bet on them. A large amount of money will be transferred to the vault through the pipes. If you want to open the vault, you'll need a demolition expert. They know that Bang was a convicted safe cracker. When Bang heard about this plan, he was instantly interested. He had a better idea, but he had to get out of prison first. So Clyde drives his car into the supermarket and gets caught and jailed, taking Bane out with him. It's a vault heist. First, they pulled their money to buy a big cake. Then they gave the cake to Purple, the vault's accountant. As a suitor, Purple, finally being courted, she had to show it off to her co-workers. Then the security guard comes over and tells her that her car has been hit. Worried, Purple rushes out to check on her car. When she came back, her co-workers had already left work. The cake was locked in the vault. At night, they donned overalls and managed to get into the tunnel. They opened the vent outside the vault and dumped the cockroaches in. When Purple came to work the next day, the vault was full of cockroaches. Then they pretended to be employees of a housekeeping company and familiarized themselves with every corner of the vault. They also cracked the vault code. Then they configured the bomb, according to Bang's instructions. The two of them managed to blow up the stadium swipe card base station. The cashier thought it was a signal problem, so now the only way to place bets is with cash. With a downseen teleportation tubes working at the same time, in 10 minutes, all the boxes in the vault have been filled with money. The race is still under preparation. Ben and Clyde, who just escaped from prison, have arrived at the racetrack. They jumped into the garbage tunnel and followed the tunnel to the bottom of the vault. Jimmy handed Ben the ingredients for the bomb. One bag of salt, two tubes of glue, two bags of gummy bears. These are all the ingredients Ben needs to make the bomb. He poured them all into a plastic bag. They don't understand what he's doing. How can these things be made into a bomb? Bang had no choice but to give them both a chemistry lesson right away. To gummy bears, salt and throwing some heat on it will give you energy. Energy means light, explosion, or as I like to call it, tell Bang. The next moment Bang puts the bomb into the pipe. After that, he hit it somewhere. The two of them, confused, then realized the danger. But his bomb development failed. The bomb that arrived in the vault didn't explode, but was delivered to them intact. Don't move. Don't breathe. 
I'm not. Bang opens the bomb and realizes that the plastic bag is too tight. Then he put the bomb into the pipe a second time. This time, the bomb does him the honor of detonating without a hitch. But the smoke from the explosion traveled down the pipe and into the cash register. The cashiers were so scared they called security. On the other side, several men rushed to insert the hose of the vacuum truck into the pipe. As Jimmy pressed the switch on the pipe, a large amount of money flew out of the pipe like snowflakes. In just a few minutes, the money filled up the truck. Two members of the team drove the car to take the money out first. But as the car turned the corner, they ran into security guards coming to check out the vault. They said they were driving to take out the trash. The security guards never dreamed that someone would steal money this way. So they didn't suspect the cleaners. With the money in hand, Bang and Clyde disappeared into the crowd. On the other hand, the teammate in the prison arranged for his henchmen to raise the trash cans and set off the fire alarm at the scheduled time. The warden was afraid that they would light up the prison, so he rushed to call for fire support. Just as the fire department was leaving, Ben and Clyde, who had been waiting outside the fire station, climbed into the fire truck. They made it back to the prison in a thrilling and lucky escape. When the firefighters arrived at the alarm point, they realized it was a prank. The angry captain took out his anchor on a garbage can. As the alarm was lifted, the nurse pushed open the door. Bane is back in his hospital bed. The racetrack finally realized that the vault had been stolen. Federal investigators immediately launched an investigation, but no matter how hard they tried, they couldn't find any clues. In the end, the track had no choice but to stop pursuing the theft. A few years later, Bane was released from prison. He returns home and digs up a bag of money buried under a tree. The movie is hilarious with its compacting plots and frequently happening climaxes. The truth is, we all have greed, but only when we spend money that's legally earned is there any justice. May excellent movies be watched by more people. You can subscribe to Chili Film and leave comments.